Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Beyond the Pitch. I'm Christian Jack. My guest this week is a fascinating one, arguably the best player in the Canadian Premier League on current form and a player for the Halifax Wanderers who is really looking to drive them forward in what is an enormous game this Wednesday in the Canadian Championship quarterfinal. Now, if you're listening to this game after that match against CF Montreal of Major League Soccer, Please stay with us. It is not necessarily just a preview for that game. In fact, it is far, far more than that, as Zhao tells really unique stories and really opens up his heart and mind about his journey from Brazil through Northern England to Estonia and now to what he describes as beautiful Halifax, Nova Scotia. Jean Morelli has become a real star in the Canadian Premier League and will be a massive part of what Halifax are trying to do on Wednesday on the pitch. But how did he get there? How did he rediscover his love for the sport? How is he still alive today? He tells a story about what happened when he was a 10-year-old, when it was no longer almost a case of falling for football. It was about saving his life after a tragic zipline accident. Thankfully, things turned out okay. But his journey and his recovery back is absolutely fascinating. He talks about his journey to Northern England, how difficult that was as a Brazilian teenager used to so much different culture. And then we kind of bonded over our love and and kind of different things about Northern England that he and I know very much about. I hope you really enjoy this. It is a real, real eye-opening insight into Jao Morelli, not only the footballer, but in particular, Jao Morelli, the man, a wonderful individual. And I hope you get to know him a little bit more through this conversation. Xiao, pleasure to speak with you. I speak with you when you're in the middle of a wonderful run right now. Fantastic form, runaway leader for the Golden Boot and for MVP. You must be really enjoying your football. Yes, thanks for having me. Yeah, I am now. Um, yeah, it's a it's a good phase of my career. Uh, thankfully, I've been scoring some some important goals for the team, and yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. We'll get to some of your important goals in a minute, and of course, your journey to Halifax and your footballing career, but. What is it about what's what's working right now for you and the team over the last few weeks? Um, I mean, for me, I think confidence is a, is a some, like one of the most important things in, in football for a player, and I feel pretty confident right now. Uh, when you see things things are working uh, for you, you just like kind of keep doing the same thing and keep going. And basically, the the last two games, as I said. Uh, we we kind of like let let the team down a little bit. Consider some some goals that we shouldn't be considering, but still like we, we got back in the game. We scored some. Uh, we 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 managed to to tie the game against York, and then uh, last game against uh, Ottawa, I managed to to score on uh, the last minutes of the game. So I think like the the team is showing a lot of char- character right now. Uh, we haven't haven't lost in six games. In the league, so we just showing a lot of character, not giving up, even if the the game is against us sometimes. So I feel like when I see all the boys just running, 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 and trying to get the goal, it just just motivates me more. And then I'm trying to to find myself in good positions to to help the team. The team is in a great run. Your race, the, the race for fourth. You've got the Halifax game uh, against uh, Montreal this week as well, which is going to be fantastic. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but I want to talk about your journey, your journey to the Canadian Premier League, young Brazilian boy growing up, falling in love with the sport. As we take that journey, what is it about Halifax, Nova Scotia, that was appealing to you? And has it become even better than you thought it would be? Um, yeah, man. I mean, I, I didn't expect that to... I don't know. This city is is different. Uh, it's a small city, but like I enjoy it a lot. The people here are fantastic. Uh, our fans are fantastic, um, and I haven't felt that this way before. Like in, in my career, I've been like to some some different places, and I feel like the most comfortable here. Uh, yeah, it's different from Brazil. It's different th- than than what I've, I, I was used to in Brazil. Uh, but this is the closest that I get, like to to call in a home. So, mm. the the guys here, the boys are amazing. The as I said, the people in general, they're they're very nice. So you feel comfortable just just being around the people, like nice people like that. So just very happy to be here. You mentioned Brazil. I think is it Itu you grew up in? Is that the name of the yeah. city? Yeah, it's the yeah. Sao Paulo, right? Uh, area is yeah. that right? So yes. Tell, tell me about your upbringing. When did you start to really fall in love with with soccer or football? What were your first memories of the sport? Uh, I mean, I started really, really young. 
I don't know how because my my brothers they didn't play football before my dad just didn't even try to to be like a professional or something he liked football obviously but I remember even starting like going to any club or any team uh I remember just playing at home and like I have two older brothers I have five siblings but I have two older brothers and they used to like annoy me and I was trying to get the ball they they used to like just try to keep me away from the ball and I was getting mad at them and uh but my I think my first memory and like that really made me fall in love was when Brazil won the the World Cup in 2002 um uh, I was really young but I remember I remember Ronaldo scoring those goals and I was like I already loved football before but that really makes me like I don't know I think that was the first really like strong memory that I have like okay mm-hmm. this is really nice so I'm, I need to try it's a great story. You were only six at the time, right? So yeah, yeah. Everybody, I always say, Jiao, covering sport for many years, uh, everyone has their World Cup, right? Everyone remembers that first World Cup where they fall, yeah. fall in love with the sport. What was that like in Brazil after Ronaldo scored those two goals against Germany and you guys party and you were t- champions of the world, which we always expect yeah. with Brazil, but still waiting yeah. for another one. What was it like that day as a six-year-old in Brazil? Uh I remember me and my parents, we, we like we were just driving around and everyone was like in the streets. Everyone, everyone you could imagine in the city was in the street, like just very loud, just playing, like celebrating. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the country stopped, I think. I don't remember everything, but like I remember going out of my house and everyone was in the street already celebrating. It was like a really, really nice memory so you fall in love with that squad and i would imagine you fall in love with who i still call the real ronaldo no i mean what a player yeah yeah Yeah, for me he's everyone says ronaldinho like pele but i think ronaldo for me was the best of, of of them all like in history for brazil it was just unbelievable, man. I remember watching him like growing up. This this stuff. It, he was really strong, really strong at that time. Football wasn't like that intense. That you know, mm. like it's changing a lot. And like he was just clinical, like strong, dribbling too. Like he was like he do, didn't lose the ball. He was doing some crazy stuff and very very direct. So I think for me, Ronaldo was the best one among them all. I agree with you. What what a player. And uh, just yeah. to see him, just to have that freedom of, of expression on the ball. That's what I love about Brazilians. That's what I love about watching you. There's something about yeah. Bra- <laughs> Brazilians with a ball at their feet. Is there not that can just express themselves more than other, other people? I mean, yeah, everyone expects that. It's just, I, I feel like I'm a very simple player, though. Like, I don't do the stuff that these guys used to do. I'm very right. far away from them. But yeah, definitely some something about the Brazilians that I think we, we have something different. There you go. A humble Pisces. That's what you are. Born in March and a Pisces. Yeah. There, there you go. Humble Pisces. Yeah. I, I feel like I feel the same. I, I'm, I'm the same. Uh, listen, you wanted to, f- to follow in the likes of Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo's footsteps. You wanted to be a footballer. But talk to me about what happened to you when you were 10. Because I've seen this on your TikTok. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know a lot of our viewers and listeners won't know what happened. So it's better for you to explain it than, than me. Um, obviously, yeah. a, a big dis- a big moment in, in your life at that moment. Talk us through what happened, Joe. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was stand uh, like any other kid. You just try stuff. You want to play. You want to want to do some some stuff that you think you can do, but sometimes you can. And I used to live in like uh, it was like a like a condo in Brazil, and um, I remember there was a house with like this with a zip line. And all all the other stuff like that you could like like climb and you know it was for kids but it was like you need you need to have like protection like you know mm-hmm. like just all the the things that you actually like have to do to go on the zip line. But that day there was no one in the house and me and my friends we saw that and they were like okay let's try it and I went I went there like a, a few times 
and I was I was going like every time I was I was doing it I was doing it faster and faster and faster. So I was just holding it, and it's like I I got loose, my hands got lo- uh, loosened up, and then I fell. It was like four m- meters high. And after that, I don't remember much. I just went to the hospital. Um, the hospital in my city is like not very good. Mm. So I stayed overnight and I was like throwing up blood. I was sleeping all day. And um, the, the other day they, they released me. They said I didn't have anything. So my parents, like they were panicking. They were saying, okay, they said, okay, let's, let's take him to Sao Paulo, the, cap- the capital of the state and uh, <clears throat> in a very good uh, hospital and i remember my dad said that like there's no money in this world that like i cannot pay like to save my son's life so it's it doesn't matter you know mm-hmm. so um we went there they ran the like the proper exams the scans and everything and i had like 15 centimeter like fracture in my skull and with the uh, internal bleeding so they kept me overnight again. And in the morning, I remember I woke up and um, I was screaming. My head was pounding. And my my mom stayed there with me and my dad went back to my city. And he was going there like later in the morning. And they straight away, they ran the, another scan. And they said, oh, the, the internal bleeding is like growing now. So we have to take it to surgery straight away. And... Um, yeah, I remember just saying, like, I'll wait for my dad, please. Just wait for him. And they said, oh, no, we can't. Your dad's going to be here when you wake up. Uh, yeah, like, thankfully, after, like, I think it was a five, six, six-hour surgery, everything went, like, really well. And, yeah, but, like, it was crazy. It was, like, scary. I was, at, I really thought I was going to, I was going to die that day. Like I didn't understand much, but like I knew I knew what was going on, and uh, but yeah, I remember <laughs> it was funny. I remember that day after I woke up, it was a World Cup too. So Brazil was playing Croatia, I think. It was when Kaka scored that, like he scored a screamer, and uh, I remember that perfectly. I woke up, I was fine, you know. I, obviously, I had to recover. Like I, I had to recover for ten months. I couldn't even leave my house. I didn't go to school. I didn't go like practice anything just stayed it stayed at home but yeah it was fine it was perfectly fine didn't have any like any problems after that they said it was a case of like either you you die or you like you make it you know and i mean it, i get emotional sometimes my parents think went crazy after that boy it was it was like just honestly i i believe in god and and there's no way i can't not believing God after that is just everything worked out perfectly for me because I was supposed to go to another doctor and, and it's like wait another three days and they canceled the appointment. So I had to go to like everything worked out perfectly. So just very thankful to, to, to be alive, to be honest. Yeah. Amen to that. God was certainly yeah. looking over you guys for, for that. Yeah. That's uh, wow. A, an incredible, powerful story. Thanks for, for sharing that after that, what were the, what was the, I guess the, the lasting things that you, I believe you still have a scar, right? On your, on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I yeah. can show you. It, it yeah. comes from, from here, it goes to here. Okay. It's a pretty big one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put it up. We'll put it up on the video. The one that you shared with us on, on, on TikTok as well, when it showed you. Yeah. Was there any issues that you had with football? Did they say you couldn't head a ball or anything like that for a while or no? Mm, no, no. They, they said that after I recover, they said, like, you can go back, like, fully, like, normal to, to, to what you were doing before. Obviously, just myself, I was kind of, like, scared to, to do some stuff, especially, like, heading balls, going, like, scared of getting hit in the head again. But, like, you just forget about it. It's kind of like a normal injury. You get some time to, to adapt and get used to it again, but nothing they they said that like i could be normal again so right 
right yeah. I, I don't, i'd imagine your parents were pretty protective of you after this though oh oh man you have no idea <laughs> they made me crazy too i couldn't like if i was talking a little bit louder already they thought i was like i don't know hurt again or something it was just it was hard for them it was really yeah. hard yeah it was understandable well, we're so thankful that you're able to tell the story, of course, and then yeah. pre- appreciate that. So then when did you, after that, Zhao, when did you start to think that you could become a professional footballer? What kind of age? Uh, at that age, I was playing already, like, probably, le- like, the highest, like, division in that age in Sao Paulo, which is the strongest one, I'm, like, between all the states. And after that, I think when I was under 15, 13, 15, I st- like I started playing for some clubs. And um, yeah, I, re- I already had that dream. And like since I was younger than that, but I started realizing that I really could be a footballer, mm, mm. <clears throat> a professional footballer. And my parents always supported me. So they helped me a lot with that too. They never said, oh, no, it's better if you be a doctor or if you do this or do that. So I just I focused fully like in being like a professional athlete. So I think under under 13, under 15, I was already like with the idea, like concrete in my mind that I could be like a, a professional footballer. That's great. And then you played for Juninho's team. Is this right? Yeah. And, and that was yeah. the connection to Middlesbrough as well. Juninho, yeah. obviously there's a few Juninhos, but if you grew yeah. up in England, if you grew up in England like I did, there's only one Juninho in, in the 90s, mate, when he was with Emerson yeah. at Middlesbrough and Ravenelli and all the, all, yeah. all the likes. A wonderful player. And was that connection with Juninho what led you to, to Middlesbrough? Yeah. Um, so he owns the club in the city I'm from. He's from the same city I am. Um, and I, f- I think I started playing that when I was under 17, under 15 one year. Then I went to another club and then came back. So from there until Middlesbrough, I, I stayed there, I uh, played there with them. And there was two other players bef- before me and some of my, my teammates that went at the same time. Uh, they went to Middlesbrough through Juninho too. So they had that connection already and they wanted to like increase it and like make it like a, a proper thing, maybe like exchange like players. And I was, yeah, I went there with another two guys. Uh, I think I just, at that time, I just turned 18, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And then I went there, we went on a, like a kind of a trial. And yeah, I signed. I signed. I signed from Middlesbrough. I was playing the under twenty threes. Like I signed a professional contract because I, I was already like uh, I signed. I was already on a professional contract in in E two. So yeah, like Junio, obviously he helped me a lot with that, and he had those those connections, and uh, he worked out like perfectly for me. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to play in England too, because uh, for me England is probably the, the hardest and the best best league in the, in the world right now and it's been a, like it's been a minute since they've been like on the top uh so yeah i w- always wanted to play there i used to love manchester united not anymore no <laughs> I, I can't say that because if cory ben sees this he's gonna say oh you support united too <laughs> but um yeah i used to love him um yeah i always wanted to play there and he helped me a lot with my career too so you don't like Man United anymore? Is that what you're saying? Uh, not really, no. That's fair. It's, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Corey Bent because Corey Bent's from Preston, which is where yeah. I'm, which was where I'm from. So I lived oh, really? in Preston for tw- yeah, I lived in Preston for twenty years. So I'm no- I'm a Northerner, and so I, I can say this because no disrespect to Fleetwood or Middlesbrough or Preston, but it can be pretty dark and pretty dull, mate. For a man coming from Brazil, a teenager coming from Brazil mm-hmm. to north to Northern England. What was that like? It was really hard for me, if I'm honest with you. I always tell uh, Corey the stories and he, he laughs because he, kn- he knows it's true. <laughs> but yeah, Middlesbrough was, I was too young. Like, I feel like just to change that culture, that the whole thing going alone, like I was living alone, like it was crazy, man. It's a complete, completely different per- place. And um, it was hard. Like, I feel like, they're not very warm like Brazilians. Like I have, I had hard times with them. Mm. 
uh, didn't have many friends uh, dealing with like the stuff and everything like it was really it was hard and then when I went to Fleetwood too like I lived in Blackpool man oh, <laughs> so, I know no. I know Blackpool well my friend I, I, I've got relatives, <gasps> relatives there oh, Yao by the uh, seaside yeah I've been to Preston a few times Preston was like the best place of like I was, we were like, okay, let's go out in Preston because Blackpool and Fleetwood, no chance, man. There's no chance. And then, yeah, it was some hard time. I had to go back home after Blackpool. I went back to Brazil <laughs> for good. <laughs> I don't. I, I could completely relate in everything that you're saying. Before I move on, what was it that you missed the most about Brazil? And what is there something that you actually fell in love with in England that you miss now? any kind of food or anything? Uh, honestly, just London. London is amazing. Right. Um, I, I went out like with some friends there sometimes, like the nights are like, nice. The people, are, there's people all from all over the world. So it's just a mix of like cultures and everything. So I like play, uh, places like that, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean... Um, what I missed the most from Brazil was just, just, just what I feel here. I can relate like to to what I feel like home. You know, having friends, like people are nice to you, like you know this kind of stuff. So I feel like in England and even in Estonia, where I play too, it like it's too cold for me. You know, it's just like people, like they're just cold, cold-hearted people. You know. Yeah. No, I understand that. I mean, you bring up Estonia. I mean, Estonians have. A, a little bit more of a reason to be that, right? They've had a terrible yeah. economy. They had a terrible world, t- t- tough time previously with the Soviet Union. I went to, I've been to Tallinn. It's a beautiful city, right? The yeah, old part of Tallinn. Um, was it just, I mean, you did really well on the pitch there. Was that, was, was yeah. that a, an area now you look back on with positivity because you played so well? There? I mean, you played UEFA, you know, Champions yeah. League qualifiers and, and Europa League qualifiers there. You must have had some good times on the pitch. Um, yeah. Uh, the football there really helped me too, like with my confidence and, and everything. Obviously, the league is like, uh, even if I, if I compare with CPL, the players here are, are better in, gen- in general. Uh, just the, the top three, four teams in, in the league, they're like really like fighting for spots and for the title. So the league is not very, very equal. So it makes it like a little bit easier sometimes but but yeah like playing the the Europa League qualifiers was amazing man I played two years and uh, yeah we went to we played the uh, Cork City the first time uh, we got uh, knocked out but it was an amazing experience the, the stadium there is really nice it's like it's all around the pitch but it's really really close I think it was like 12,000 people but like it felt like 50,000 and um, the other time we went to Iceland and it was a really good experience too. And all these games I played really well. Like I had, I mean, I had like offers for, from Cork City after that because I played really well uh, against them. And yeah, it was amazing for me too. Like some good experience. Uh, yeah, a lot of positive things to take from there. But obviously, like, as I said, off the pitch was kind of hard too again but it happens man like you have to sacrifice a lot of stuff to to be in our position so Mm. it's normal yeah you handle it well by the way your english is tremendous uh for a brazilian you've got such great english you do have a little bit of a northern twang i can hear the the the, Uh, the, the, (laughs) the, 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 when when did you did you quickly learn that before you got there or is it how did that quickly come and i don't i don't even know how how to explain that because when I went to England, I didn't speak English at all, okay. like at all. And I was just, I, I struggled the first months. I really struggled, but like I, I'm a, I, I really am a quick le- learner. So I think I, after like six months, I was understanding most of it already. It's hard to like, it's really hard to 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 talk because the order of the words and everything is different from Portuguese. So, so when you when you don't think in English, you try to just translate. You don't speak it properly, you know. Like like today, I just think in English, so it's natural. 
Uh, but yeah, I struggled. And uh, if I was doing this interview like three years ago, it would be a completely different accent. I promise you. I had to change my accent in Estonia because no one could understand me. And now living in Canada, you obviously pick up some some different accents too because it's not my first language. So it changed a lot. My accent changed a lot. They used they used to call me a burr a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're already you're already a burr a lot. Yeah. I was like okay, that's a compliment. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> take it, mate. But I can definitely hear the northern accent, and I like it. So it reminds me of home a little bit. So you brought you bring yourself to Canada. Let's talk about your actions on the pitch because. You are obviously having a terrific season, but you played in a few different positions this year. Yeah. You know, your team plays as a back four sometimes, they play as a three, you play as a central midfielder, you play as a 10. I think 10 is your preference, but talk to me a little bit about having the versatility and, and how much you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, the coach knows I can can do the other positions too, but like I prefer as a 10 where I feel the most comfortable playing. Like It's kind of more natural for me. Uh but yeah, like I mean, I I know like with three different positions I can help. Even winger too, I played sometimes. Uh, so three, four different positions I can play. I can I can help the team like a lot. Uh, if coach Steven wants to change like a formation or put some other players to play and adapt into a different position, I, I know I can do that. So I think he can be- get the best of me. Like and and like with this like four different positions so, but as a 10 I feel like I'm, I'm the best this is my best position to play I feel more comfortable natural uh, the, like right in the spot that, that I want to be uh, but yeah even like playing a, a little bit more defensive sometimes as a, I've been playing uh, I played against Ottawa um, I still want to get close to the goal and help the team with like scoring. And I really enjoy playing as a striker too. Uh, I mean, it's less defending. So for a Brazilian, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, the 10, the 10 position for me is, is the best one. I did a television tactical breakdown on you. And I thought when I looked at you and scouted you, your best attributes are when you're attacking space, when you can arrive late into the yeah. box and you score a lot of goals like that. And then you scored again like that, the winner against Ottawa in the, in the 90th minute with your left foot. What's that like when you can see a play developing and you can run into the box and then one touch finish? That must be a, a terrific feeling when you read a play and finish it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when, as soon as I see the ball going wide, I just try to pick the right moment to go and not be too early or too late. Uh, but yeah, that that I think that's the best uh, spot that I can be there in the box for for myself. I think I have a have a good finishing, like good finishing, and it's not an easy ball to finish, to be honest. But when you practice a lot, it's it becomes easier. Uh, yeah, I feel like when I'm I'm playing striker, it's harder for me to do that. So. That's why when I play as a 10, it's more natural for me to be in those positions. And uh, it's hard for the defenders, man. Like cutting the ball back, it's harder for them because they're running backwards. So they're not really expecting that. So, yeah, uh, I saw the, the the analysis. It was really nice. I sent, I sent it to all my family, even they don't speak English, but it was really nice. Uh, but, yeah, those those are the best. Um, I think most of my goals are scored like that, so... It's working out. I'm glad you saw it because you deserve the spotlight, my friend. Listen, yeah. just a couple more for you and I'll let you go. You mentioned the atmosphere playing Cork in the in the Europa League. What's it like playing Wanderers Grounds? Because it's one of the best, if not the best atmosphere yeah. in the league right now. What's it like when you get there and the fans are close to the pitch? And how much are you excited about playing uh, CF Montreal here, an MLS team in, the, in, 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 in this week in, the, in a big Canadian championship game? Uh, yeah, I can definitely, definitely relate to to that game that I played in for Europa League. Uh, they're they're really nice, man. Like it, it's just different the way they cheer, but like <laughs> they're really nice. And we're gonna have full capacity again now uh, against Montreal. So I, I honestly I can't wait. I can't wait to play them. I really feel like that we have the qualities to to 
to go through this this stage again. Like I mean, it's hard because they obviously on paper they're they're better, and they're the favorites. But football is crazy, you know. So uh, I'm really excited, really excited to play that, and uh, definitely the the atmosphere in uh, the Wanderers grounds is the best one in the league for sure. Special times happening there at Wanderers grounds. Uh, last one for you. Your team believes they're going to make the playoffs, don't they? Obviously, you made the final last yeah. year. You're in a really good run here. The top three look like they're getting away a little bit, but that fourth spot, I'd imagine you feel like that you belong there. Yeah, for sure. That's our goal. Uh, I mean, the, the format really helps us at this point because all you have to do is be a top four to make the playoffs. And then after that, it's just two games and whatever happens, happens. Uh, but yeah, we really believe that we can do it. Uh, I mean, we've been proving that we have the quality to do it and be there uh, among the, the 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 other top three teams. So now we just have like a direct uh, challenge against the York. Uh, we played them a few times. Forge too. Forge is not that far from us too. So we played them another two times. And if we win, we probably go ahead of them. Uh, so I mean, you just have to. Uh, the coach, coach, uh, he, he jokes sometimes. He says, "For us to be champions, all you have to do is win all the games." So it is what it is. You have to 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 win it. And uh, I really believe in our team. Uh, we we our moment is good right now. So I think we can really make and achieve what we want. And the very last one for you: How much do you love being the main man? I know it's a team sport. But how much do you love being the guy who's getting the big goals at the moment and carrying your team? That must be something that must fill you with a lot of pride. Uh, yeah, definitely. Like seeing your name uh, all over the, the social media is nice. But at the same time, I try sometimes I, I know someone tag, tag me in like in something. I don't even open it. Like I don't want to see it all the time. You know, I just want to focus in the, like in the games. We have a lot of games this month. Uh, I don't really, obviously everyone likes attention, but for me, I want to get the attention at the end of, of the season. You know what I mean? Right now, I don't, I don't care what they say or I don't care like if I'm playing bad or good, like I want to do like me and not pay attention to social media right now. So obviously I like because I like it because I think I like I deserve to get that attention because I've been proving it on the pitch, but it's far from finished. The season is far from finished. If I stop doing what I'm doing now, everyone's going to forget. So I need to keep going and uh, I'm focused and I try not to pay much attention for that. In that. Every credit to you for that as well. And every credit for the Canadian Premier League. The Canadian Premier League is better because you're in it. No question about it. You're driving the quality forward. I cannot thank you enough for this wonderful chat. It's been brilliant. Talking about thank Northern you. England again and your recovery yeah. from, from that and Brazil. And uh, as I said, it's an absolute delight to chat with you. And the league is far better for having you in it. So good luck, my friend, against Montreal. And good luck for thank the rest of the Thank you very much. Chat soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It was amazing. Thank you. What a wonderful storyteller. I can't thank Zhao enough. Again, English, not his, his first language, certainly, uh, but he was just tremendous in the way that he was able to describe stuff. Just a really warm, pleasant man. I can't thank him and Halifax Wanderers enough for his time. And I hope, like me, after you've listened to that, you have a new appreciation for what Zhao Morelli is on the pitch. And I think we're pretty lucky to have him in here in the Canadian Premier League as well. A reminder, Beyond the Pitch continues every week. We'll have different guests as we get looking forward, looking forward to more talk on the Canadian Premier League and starting to turn our attention again to three more enormous World Cup qualifiers for the Canadian men's national team in October. Please join us at campl.ca as we continue to look, o- look over a triple header of Canadian Championship games this week and we've got coverage all across there with Marty, Charlie, Benedict and myself. But until then, enjoy the games everyone. Take care of each other. Stay healthy. God bless and we'll speak to you soon.